so what we're dealing here is a case that is so old and so grotesque that I'm definitely going to share through creepy news with you today. Because this guy on the screen that you see, the sketch, was of the perpetrator and apparently he was convicted for murdering other children even though he was a child himself. So he was like 15 years old at the time when they found a couple of dead children and they convicted him of these murders. Then he was sentenced to death, but it was later commuted to life in prison. So he never got the death penalty that was, you know, being carried out. But he was in prison pretty much for the rest of his life until he reached the age of 72. That's a long time to be locked up. That's for sure. Then again, if you murder children or people in general, I guess that's what you get. So let me narrate the details they got on the wiki for you because it's pretty interesting. They stated the following. Jesse Pomeroy was a convicted American murderer and the youngest person in the history of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to be convicted of murder in the first degree. He was found guilty by a jury trial held in the Supreme Judicial Court of the Suffolk County in December 1874. Now about the background, it's like all these other old cases, there's not a lot to it, but at least they do have the crimes detailed out. And it stated the following. Now, he was born in Charleston, Massachusetts to Thomas J. Pomeroy and Roth Ann Snowman. He was the second of two children. His brother Charles was two years older. Thomas Pomeroy was a veteran of the US Civil War. Now, at first, like any other potential murderer, these crimes that he committed didn't start just with taking out other humans. First, he would just assault other children, and this is what they stated concerning that. From 1871 to 1872, there were reports that several young boys were individually enticed to remote areas and attacked by a slightly older boy. However, no one was ever arrested. The attacks were noteworthy because of the extreme amount of brutality used by the assailant. The young boys were beaten with a fist and a belt and in at least two of the attacks a knife. Some of the boys were apparently physically scarred permanently. In 1872, Roth and the two children moved to South Boston. Pomeroy's attacks on young boys continued and he was finally arrested and his case heard in front of a juvenile court judge. He was found guilty and sentenced to the State Reform School for Boys at Westboro, Massachusetts for his minority until he turned 18. The Boston Globe covered this story. The last line of the article said the following. It is generally concluded that the boy is mentally deficient. And Wiki also states that it needs a citation. So perhaps this was written by someone that held a grudge against this guy. A vampire perhaps? That's very old by now. Sometimes I find that very interesting because I guess people that collect this data also don't always have all the source material available to them. Perhaps it's all just hearsay at this point. But based on his actions you could actually very well reason that because the next paragraph is titled The Cry. That's just what it says, the crime. So in February 1874, at the age of 14, Pomeroy was paroled back to his mother and brother in South Boston. His mother ran her own dressmaking shop and his brother Charles sold newspapers. In March 1874, a 10-year-old girl from South Boston named Katie Curran went missing. On April 22, 1874, the mutilated body of four-year-old Horace Millen was found on the marsh of Dorchester Bay. Immediately, the police detective sought out Pomeroy, despite lacking evidence implicating him in the crime. The body of Katie Curran was found later in the basement of Pomeroy's mother's dress shop. Her remains were hastily and carelessly concealed in an ash heap. Now, during the trial, he was taken to view Millen's body and asked if he committed the murder. At the coroner's inquest, Pomeroy was denied the right to counsel. The case of Commonwealth versus Pomeroy was heard in a Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court on December 9th and December 10th, 1874. At the trial, the Attorney General argued for a verdict of guilty of murder in the first degree. In his closing arguments, he urged an alternative charge of murder with extreme atrocity, which, according to Massachusetts law, is first degree murder, but differs from the original charge in the requirement of premeditation. 
He was pronounced guilty on December 10, 1874, with the jury's recommendation of mercy on account of the prisoner's youth. His attorney, Charles Robinson, filled two exceptions which were overruled in February 1875, at which point he was sentenced to death by hanging. It remained to the governor to sign the death warrant and assign a date for Pomeroy's execution. However, Governor William Gaston refused to comply with his executive responsibility. The only legal means of sparing Pomeroy's life was through the Massachusetts Governor's Council, and only if a simple majority of the nine-member council voted to commute the death penalty. Over the next year and a half, the council voted three times. The first two votes upheld his execution, and both times Governor Gaston refused to sign the death warrant. In August 1876, the council took a third vote anonymously, and his sentence was commuted to life in prison in solitary confinement. On the evening of September 7, 1876, he was transferred from the Suffolk County Jail to the state prison at Charleston and began his life in solitary. He was 16 years old at the time. He remained incarcerated at the Charleston State Prison. In prison, he claimed that he taught himself to read several foreign languages, including Hebrew, and one visiting psychiatrist found that he learned German with considerable accuracy. He wrote poetry and argued with prison officials over his right to have it published, and he studied law books and spent decades composing legal challenges to his conviction and requests for a pardon. A psychiatric report on him made in 1914 and quoted extensively in the Boston Globe after his death noted that he had made 10 or 12 determined attempts to escape and that handmade tools were frequently found in his possession. A prison warder reported finding rope, steel pens and a drill that Pomeroy had concealed in his cell or on his person. According to the Globe, he lost an eye after attempting to destroy the side of his cell by redirecting a gas pipe. The 1914 psychiatric report claimed that he had shown the greatest ingenuity and a persistence which is unprecedented in the history of the prison. In 1917, with the support of District Attorney Joseph Pallider, Pomeroy's sentence was commuted to the extent of allowing him the privileges afforded to other life prisoners. At first he resisted, wanting nothing less than a pardon. He eventually adjusted to his changed circumstances and appeared in a ministerial show at the prison. In 1929, by this time an elderly man in frail health, he was transferred to Bridgewater Hospital for the criminal insane, where he died on September 29th, 1932. And that was the end of the article. And it's quite the case if you think about it. This guy be murdering children when he was a child himself. Of course, this is not the only case in the whole world where this occurred. There are actually many gruesome cases where children go on a murder spree, but it's still pretty, pretty rare in a way. Because it takes a lot of darkness and evilness that is almost inborn in that case. Because if it's an adult, it's usually after maybe years of building up a grudge to a certain particular kind of gender or person or particular look that people have that they can't stand and they just want to take them out. Like a bunch of madmen, of course. But this one seemed like he was, since he was still a child, that perhaps none of that was necessarily the case. It's very hard to grasp why he would do this. There's no details on it that they ever tried to get him to tell them necessarily why he did it. I'm sure they did, but they just didn't document it, I suppose. But it's another one of those gruesome cases from the late 1800s, and this time by an actual child that ultimately stayed in prison literally for the rest of his life. Not just 20 years and then the death penalty, no, for a very long time, as you heard for yourself. I don't know what kind of life that must be like. Again, I know murdering people, of course, that deserves punishment, but just the idea that you would be locked up for uh, that many decades, and also in solitary confinement, even though currently my lifestyle also feels like solitary confinement due to the pandemic. You know, you can hardly leave your house, or at least if you do, there's, there's nothing to do out there. So I guess we're all in solitary confinement right now, because perhaps we're all bad people, according to the government. But let's not get into conspiracies. These were the details concerning Jesse Pomeroy.
in the late 1800s. He was also known under multiple other names. The Demon, the Red Devil, the Boston Boy Fiend, the Boy Torturer. And with that being said, dear viewer, have sweet dreams. Thank you.